Welcome to Daiji's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make onigirazu. So I hope you know onigiri, those are rice balls with different fillings inside. So this onigirazu is kind of a variation of onigiri, but instead of making it through squeezing, it's kind of like a sandwich with rice. So you have a layer of rice, then you have the filling, you have another layer of rice, and wrapped in nori sheet. The name onigirazu came from kind of like the negation of onigiri. The word nigiri means to squeeze or pack tightly. That's why this type of sushi is called nigiri sushi because it's made through squeezing the rice and the fish together. And this dish onigirazu is kind of fairly new. I think it kind of came out like in the last 10-15 years or so. Some people just kind of started making sandwich with rice. And today I'm going to show you one variation with teriyaki chicken, a very typical filling. But also you can put in different filling like tonkatsu or like shobayaki, ginger pork stir fry, or like humbug or like tempura. So you can be very creative with this. And this is also very perfect for a bento. Because I got a lot of requests for the bento recipes, I wasn't planning on making that video because you can put in just like different things inside. But instead I made a playlist including all different kind of recipes that are suitable for bento. So I hope you check those out as well. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for onigirazu with teriyaki chicken. For the rice, I have just regular Japanese sticky rice. And today I'll be using chicken thigh. If you want to make it lean, you can also use chicken breast, but I think chicken thigh tastes the best. Or also if you're vegetarian, you can substitute this with tofu. Then you have a vegetarian vegan onigirazu with teriyaki tofu. And also I'm going to put in a little bit of lettuce to it and shirinori seaweed. And for the seasoning, I have soy sauce and sugar and kewpie mayonnaise. If you don't have this kewpie mayonnaise, it's of course it's okay, you can use just regular mayonnaise. This kewpie mayonnaise has a little more depth to the flavor. To my opinion, this matches also the teriyaki sauce better, so try to get this. If not, that's also okay. Then let's start cooking. So the first thing is preparing the rice. I'm just gonna rinse the rice as usual. I'm gonna leave it like this for a minute or so and let the water drain. So after a minute, I'm gonna throw away this water. And then here I'm gonna add in 1.2 cups of water. There's about one and one fifth. And then I'm gonna let this sit for at least an hour or so and let the rice grains soak in the water. Now, while we're waiting on the rice, let's prepare the rest of the ingredients. So the lettuce has been washed and it's just the chicken meat to prepare. So if you're cutting any kind of meat or fish on a wooden cutting board, you want to wet it first. Otherwise the blood and the juice is going to sink into the cutting board and whatever you cut afterwards is going to smell like meat or fish. So I'm gonna do that first. And here I have prepared chicken thigh. And as you can see, it's not flat and it'll be a little bit difficult to work with, put in as a filling for the onigirazu. I'm just gonna make a couple slits to make it flat. Just like that. Then this is ready for marinade. Then let's make the marinade for the chicken. So here I'm gonna make it just a regular teriyaki sauce. Sugar and soy sauce with one to two ratio. One tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And I'm just gonna mix it thoroughly. And it's okay if the sugar doesn't dissolve immediately. After 10 minutes or so, they'll dissolve anyway. And then here I'm gonna put in the chicken meat. Just around like this. Then I'm gonna let this sit and let it marinate for at least an hour or so and let the meat soak in the sauce. So an hour has passed. As you can see, the rice has soaked in the water. Now we're ready to cook. So I'm gonna first cook the rice, and then turn the heat to high and bring this to boil. Now this has come to boil, I'm gonna turn the heat to simmer, and then we're gonna cook like this and simmer for 10 minutes. Now the rice is finished cooking. I'm gonna put this to the side and cook the chicken. Now let's fry the chicken. So as you can see, the chicken has been marinated for an hour as well. Then we're gonna turn the heat to medium. Now once the frying pan has been heated, I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon of frying oil. So if you put the chicken right in the pan like this, the soy sauce is going to burn. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put in a paper towel and take away a little bit of the liquid. I'm gonna fry the chicken, the skin side first. Then I'm gonna put the lid on and cook like this for a minute or so. So after about a minute or so, I'm gonna turn to the other side and cook like this for another minute or so. 
So after a minute or so, the bottom side is doing really good. I'm going to flip to the other side and cook like this for another minute or so. And now after a minute, oof, it's a bit burnt. And with a paper towel, I'm going to take away the excess oil. And now I'm going to turn the heat to low. And in this, I'm going to put in the rest of the sauce. We're going to thicken the sauce like this in low heat. I'm going to try to put the marinade sauce around the chicken. So as the marinade sauce is thickened and has coated the chicken like this, I'm going to turn the heat off. And then I'm going to put this to the side and let it cool off. So before we're going to assemble, I'm going to roast the nori sheet. If you're using a quality nori sheet, then you don't need to do this. But the nori I have is not so high quality. Or also if you have old stale nori, then you might want to do this so that the flavor of the nori is much stronger. It's preferable to use an open flame, but if you have an electric cooker, it works not as well, but still works. Uh, what you want to do is, you have to put it to like a medium heat or so. And then I'm going to kind of put it over like this and let it roast just slightly. You just switch around and do this like this several times. Once it's crispy like this, then this is good. I'm gonna first take out the rice and make sure you wet the spatula. So I'm gonna let this sit for a minute or so and let it cool off. Otherwise the nori sheet is going to be too soft and can be easily breaking off. So once the rice is cooled off, we're ready to assemble everything. So I'm gonna put the nori like this diagonally and I'm going to put the rice in the middle as a square, just half of this. I'm gonna try to make it as square as possible. And then here I'm gonna put in some lettuce. Then here I'm going to put in some cupy mayonnaise, whichever you want. And then this I'm going to put in the chicken. And I'm going to put the rice to cover this. I'm going to try to make it also as square as possible. Then I'm going to try to cover this with the nori sheet. And what I usually do is just use a couple grains of rice and put it here so that they'll stick together. And then now this is wrapped. So you can put this in a bento box like this. Well, it's easier if you use a saran wrap like this. And then put this on top of a saran wrap and wrap it with a saran wrap like this. And then I'm going to put this top side on the bottom like this so that the other side will also stick together well. Same thing you would do with maki sushi. And then we're gonna let it sit like this for a minute or so and then let the nori stick together. Now let's cut this in half and serve. If you're making this for bento, you can just take it like this, then it's already in package. But if you're eating at home, then it might be easier to just cut it in half. Oh, that looks so great. Then let's eat. Oh, this looks so amazing. Let's eat. いただきます。Oh, this is really delicious. So this is meant to be a bento, so it's cooled off, but still the flavor is really good. This combination of teriyaki sauce and the kubi mayonnaise is so amazing. The teriyaki sauce have this sweet salty flavor, and then the mayonnaise have this salty sourness to it. And to that comes a little hint of the snowy, the seaweed. The combination is just so incredible. And also this is covered with nori, so my hands stays clean. This is a really perfect lunch. Like my ass. Mm. Oh, this is so tasty, so delicious.
and also the lettuce is adding a little bit of the bitterness to it, making this flavor much more complex, and yet everything is in one harmony. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was delicious. Oh, that was so tasty. So as you saw making this, only as it's quite easy, and it's really a perfect bento lunch. Depending on what you put inside as a filling, you can be very creative with this. So I hope you give this a try. If you enjoyed what you saw, I'd love it if you could hit me the like button, or if you have any feedbacks, please feel free to write anything in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye.